after the previous introductory presentations on Quake W, on showing what types of analyses are available in GeoStudio and how the different types of analysis apply to different situations. We are now going to move on to more details in Quake W, particularly on the details of the formulation and the procedures for doing a typical type of an analysis. To begin with, we are going to make a few comments about the Quake W fundamentals and its implementation. To begin with then, here is the dynamic finite element equation. And uh, the equation is very similar to all the other finite element equations in GeoStudio, but very briefly, we have here the stiffness matrix. It is a characteristic matrix of an element describing its uh, stiffness. And then we have a damping matrix and a mass matrix. And we have our primary unknown, which is the displacement. And then we have damping times velocity or the rate sorry, the change of displacement with time is the velocity. That's this component here. And then we have the rate of change of displacement with time, which is the acceleration in this part of the equation here. So we have stiffness and damping and mass matrix. And all of this is being driven by a force on the right-hand side of the equation. And in the Quake W formulation, the force is the mass times the acceleration. It is the mass times the earthquake acceleration, which is the applied driving force for the equation. The primary unknown in this equation is the displacement. The value, it's the value that needs to be computed or solved for. Once again, the applied force F on the right-hand side of the equation is the inertial force created by the earthquake. And again, it, it, it's equal to the mass times the acceleration created by the earthquake. So the objective of the analysis is to determine the displacements. And this is called the primary unknowns. You can see that in this equation we have time, we have the change of displacement with respect to time, and we have the rate of change of displacement with res time, respect to time, which is the acceleration. And on the right-hand side, we have mass times acceleration, but the acceleration changes with time. So what we need to do is to integrate this equation with respect to time. To do this, we use a finite different scheme. And we define a time step, a time increment, delta t. And the delta t is the time, the time at the end of the time step minus the time at the start of the time step. And so we have a time stepping procedure. In numerical methods, this is called a direct integration scheme. And so we have to write d in terms of the displacement at the end of the time step and the beginning of the time step. The displacement at the beginning of the time step is known from the previous time step. So as we march forward in time, we always know the conditions at the tar start of a delta t, and we need to compute the conditions at the end of the specified time step. Consequently, you as the user, you need to specify 
a time stepping procedure and we will show later how to do this. Ultimately the finite element equation takes the form shown here and the form of this equation is identical to the form that is in all of the other GeoStudio finite element analysis. We have the characteristics of the elements, we have the displacement, and we have the driving force. And so to solve this equation, the earthquake, the earthquake shaking has to be specified number one as a displacement versus time boundary condition or as a forcing body load. To those of you who have been part of other presentations on the finite element method, we know we are always left with one of two options. We can specify the force, so to speak, on the right-hand side and compute displacement, or we can compute displacement and compute the force. So we can only specify one of the two, not both. Quake W uses option number two. We specify the force on the right-hand side of the equation and seek to compute the displacement. So the Quake W implementation very briefly is as follows. The boundary is fixed. So we fix we fix the boundary at the base here, and then we apply an inertial force to all of the elements, and the earthquake inertial force is a, a specified as a body load, mass times acceleration. So we determine the volume or weight or mass of each element, and the Mass then is multiplied times the specified acceleration from the earthquake record, and these are the forces that are applied to each of the element node, nodes at each of the elements. This becomes the driving force. But the point is that the Quake W implementation is we apply a force and compute displacements relative to a fixed base. The solution from the finite element equation gives us the relative motion. It is the motion relative to the fixed base. And it's important and vitally important to recognize that only relative motion induces dynamic shear stresses. Solid body motion does not create dynamic shear stresses. So our objective in solving these finite element equations is primarily to determine the dynamic shear stresses. This is the thing that we are really after. It's the dynamic shear stresses that cause the generation of excess pore pressures and this is ultimately the objective of the analysis. So to try to illustrate this a little bit more, on the left here we have shown motion relative only. Notice that the base is fixed and uh, consequently any movement in the structure is relative to the fixed base. This is in contrast to solid body motion and the solid body motion gives us the relative plus the solid body is equal to the relative plus whatever the earthquake itself produces in the motion. And I can explain this a little bit better on the next slide. The solid body motion in Quake W is determined by double integration of the input acceleration time history. If we were to if we were to put a history point at the base of the problem, here's a history point, and at the end of the analysis in contour or the results view, 
If we plot acceleration versus time, we would get the input record. So this is the input record which acts at the base of the problem where we have fixed the problem, but this is the acceleration. If we do a double integration, we get the base velocity and then we get the base displacement. So this is what we call the solid body motion. Once we know the solid body motion, the solution from the finite element equations gives us the relative motion, and so we add up the solid body motion together with the finite element computed relative motion, and this is the absolute motion of the structure. But let me repeat once again, it is the relative motion that causes dynamic shear stresses and the dynamic shear stresses is what causes the generation of excess pore pressures. So from an engineering point of view and liquefaction point of view, we are primarily interested in relative motion, not solid body motion. Nonetheless, we do provide both of them, but it is important to distinguish between the two when interpreting the results. To repeat and summarize then once again, the primary geotechnical interest is the relative motion. Only the relative motion causes dynamic shear stresses, and it is the dynamic shear stress that causes the generation of excess pore pressures. And stated another way, solid body motion does not generate excess pore pressures. So with that brief presentation on the fundamentals in Quake W, what I will now do is lead you through a complete analysis. I have set up a simple example here. It may not all be all that realistic, but it's pretty realistic. Uh, it's just designed to illustrate techniques and procedures. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work through this complete example with detailed discussions on individual steps and hopefully by going through this example you see all the steps required in doing all the aspects of a Quake W analysis. A resources file has been provided for you. It's called Quake 01 Workshop Example. I have provided for you already the geometry and uh, provided some material properties. So what we're going to do now in the rest of the Quake W presentation is to walk through this example in great detail describing each of the steps. So the next step then is to go to an open up a GeoStudio and open up this file and then we'll start working with this file.